Hello and welcome back to another edition of our Trib Preps video series. We are in week eight. We'll be recapping here shortly. Like always, my name is Alex Vandenhutten, and to my left is sports editor Todd Sommerfeld. And a couple big games we'll get to in uh, around the MVC, especially in the MVC, that we'll highlight in just one second. But first, let's run through the list of scores. Um, Alaska manhandles Central 41 0. Sparta, uh, maybe some surprise to uh, some people. Went into Holman and beat them 25-20. Toma picks up their first MVC win, 21-7 over West Salem. Um, Lancaster took care of business against Aquinas, 34-0. Iowa Grant picked up their first victory this season, 18-6 over on Alaska Luther. Bangor, 50, Brookwood, 0. Six straight Scenic Bluffs title for the Cardinals there. Uh, Cashton, 14, Royal, 13. Black River Falls, 32, Adams Friendship, 22 in the South Central. And in SWC, River Valley, 41, West B, 6, Prey to Sheen, big winners, 58, Dodgeville, 8, uh, Platteville, winners, 24-20 over Arcadia, uh, Levo Strum knocked off Mel Min, Melrose Mendoro, 14-7 in Dairyland, Blair Taylor picks up another win, 21-9 over Augusta, uh, Caledonia extended the nation's longest win streak to 61 with a 34-0 drubbing of Pine Island. They scored two defensive touchdowns there. And over in the Ridge and Valley, tough one for DeSoto tonight. Um, they drop 22-20 to Ithaca. Um, DeSoto had a two-point conversion um, at the end there to try and tie it. Um, it was unsuccessful. Okay. Yep. And uh, so another tough loss for Pirates. And non-conference, Logan, a very good showing over Wisconsin Rapids, 40-20. to And Richland Center knocked off Roca in overtime, 24-21. to And first off, Todd, you know, the two big games, of course, were Sparta Holman and Alaska Central. Yes. Um, let's start with your game first, Sparta, because I think that was kind of the best one of the night. Uh, Sparta. That was interesting. Yeah, Sparta, you know, was able to, <laughs> got a big lead early, but just able to hold off Holman at the end there. Take me through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, Holman was up 7-6 to six at the half, and then uh, Sparta came out and, and scored, and then on Holman's next drive, there was a fumble, and, and Sparta returned it to the end zone. It was two touchdowns in the span of 32 seconds uh, to take control. They got another stop, scored again, went up 25-7, to seven, and then Holman came back in the fourth quarter. It was when you see a, a triple option team down by that deficit going mm -hmm. into the fourth quarter, you know it's going to be trouble. Uh, but they scored on a pass play on the first play of the fourth quarter to give themselves some time. Uh, scored again, they had an onside kick, got the ball, um, and the game ended. Well, they had, they had one drive. Uh, There's a little controversy on the, the spot of the, the ball, fourth and eight. Uh, Brett Holden ran and they initially signaled first down and then decided he was out of bounds before the sticks. Uh, they used their timeouts to get the ball back one more time and they had a fourth and 20 from the 26 on their last snap and uh, uh, Cam Weber got sacked uh, running around just trying to, it wasn't even really looking for a receiver, it was trying to get himself in position to throw the ball and he just couldn't even mm -hmm. do it. He had no chance to get rid of it because uh, he was running away from defender after defender. Um, so Sparta gets the big stop at the end and, and big win, beating Holman now two years in a row, which is a pretty big deal for Sparta. Has you know set themselves up for a chance at that first yeah. NBC championship. If if Holman can beat on Alaska next week, uh, we have a three way tie for the top. If if on Alaska wins, they're outright champs, and Sparta will have to try again next year. But they at least did what they needed to do tonight to give themselves that chance, and now they'll just kind of wait and see what happens next week. And Cole Wisniewski, only what, three passes, I think you told me? Two, yeah, one, one for three, two yards. He ran for 105. Uh, Nick Kent had a really good game, 107 yards for him. And, uh, I mean, Holman really controlled it in terms of, uh, I think they were 73 plays to 41, something, something wow. like that. Wow, um, held, Had the ball for like 29 minutes. Mm. Uh, but Sparta obviously did more with the ball when they had it, and they got the big... Uh, I mean, Holman had three fumbles, lost three fumbles in the game. Big deal there. The first two drives they had, they went down into the red zone and they fumbled the ball away. Um, Sparta turned the first one into something big. Uh, but really just kind of Sparta took advantage of the opportunities that came up. And, and Holman went out and really did what it wanted to do offensively, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, Travis Kowalski at halftime asked me, what do you think? And it was a 7-6 game. And I said... If you guys don't turn it over in the second half, you're going to win. Yeah. Because um, they were moving the ball mm -hmm. uh, pretty consistently. They kept doing it, but the turnovers just just killed them uh, in this game. And 
And as he said, same thing happened against Menominee, same thing happened last year against Menominee. Um, when, when they lose, it's, it's because of these turnovers uh, as of late, and, and they hadn't been doing that recently. Um, three straight shutouts, and Sparta mm -hmm. came out and, and made some big plays against that defense this time, and, and it was a really, a really exciting game. It, it was, because it really seemed like Holman was in control, and then it seemed like Sparta just buried them. Yeah. And then there they were, right at the end. They had the ball in the last couple of minutes twice uh, with, with a chance and, and just couldn't finish it off. Yeah, and like we said, you know, Sparta, I mean, just to have a chance to play for, I mean, potentially a share, they could potentially share a conference title. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's incredible in itself, mm -hmm. on its own right, first time ever. But like Todd said, you know, Sparta's win sets up a big-time matchup next week, um, Holman versus Onalaska. Um, tonight, I was at UWL to watch Onalaska just put Shocker. an absolute beatdown. I mean, yeah. an absolute beatdown on Central. Yeah. Absolute yeah. beatdown. I guess they they took uh, offense to some things we said uh, in our <laughs> Thursday night video. Um, but I'd say them again. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I mean, Johnny Davis is, is that good of a player, but yeah. obviously Onalaska was, was up the task tonight. Um, we haven't seen that happen to Johnny much, if at all. Mm -hmm. uh, even in games that, that Central loses, that offense can move the ball. He can make big plays, whether it's it's running or getting outside the pocket. Now that's something obviously their focus was not let him get out. out yeah, the that pocket. was the that was the key tonight, um, and, and that's a, a obviously that that worked. Uh, even that I don't think is an easy thing to do, but on Alaska found a way to do it. So a great defensive uh, effort by on Alaska. Great defensive performance, one that uh, people might be talking about for a while just with the caliber of the person that they shut down. Yeah, and Todd, here are, are in Johnny's stats. He was two for 13, passing 13 yards, Man. 13 yards, two for 13. And then yeah. he had 12 carries for 38 yards. He also had a reception for 15, too. Okay, but still, I yeah. mean, weird. Like I said, that doesn't happen. And, he and averages we're... near 400 yards a game. He <laughs> entered, <laughs> you know, I just did the story. He entered the night out averaging nearly 400 yards a game, yep. rushing and passing. Yep. And on Alaska, Alaska just yeah. shut them down. And Alaska, I mean, they have terrific playmakers up and down mm -hmm. that defensive, you know, defensive unit. And, you know, we, and we knew the defense was yeah, we knew they were playing better. Yeah. Um, but like I said, you can't expect. I don't think you can Who expect could have, to go out and do that. Yeah. Um, but they did it. They did so it. So give them give them all the credit in the world for going out there and, and doing that. And as as we said, we've said before. Um, the, the, the defense kind of gets overlooked, mm -hmm. and I don't think it will anymore. I don't think something so like that. I mean, we, we can say all we want to say about the offense, but the defense is, is right there too, and, and, and maybe just as dominant right now. It'll be interesting to see how the game it goes with Holman next week. Uh, just really big rivals, and mm -hmm. they're both going to be so geeked they're up They're itching for, for it. Yeah, they're itching for oh, it already. They're, they're, yeah, they're ready to play this game. Both sides are, and, and Holman has to go out and play well to get a share, and Onalaska has to go out and play well to get it outright. And and Ana wants it outright, and Holman wants a piece. So we'll we'll see how it goes. And Levinsky, Nathan Levinsky, had another huge night, um, pretty big past couple of weeks for him. You know, yeah, he's walk on offer at South Dakota, and now uh, you know gonna he had a great night tonight. Almost had two hundred twenty nine yards. There was over two hundred last week. Two hundred last week, yeah. yeah. Twenty. He had uh, had a great game against Sparta. He's he's really yeah. turning it on. He is, yeah. He looks good right now. And uh, they had a couple. They ran probably. Like, I was just looking back. Probably like about four or five direct snaps right to him. Mm -hmm. uh, took one twenty nine yards to the house. That was their first touchdown. Second one um, was a seventy nine yard. That was direct snap too, right? That was a direct snap, yeah. and uh, it's funny because. You look and all of a sudden you see who's his lead blocker, yeah, yeah. and it's uh, quarterback Austin Larson, Larson, and he threw the key block, <laughs> and and then I asked Larson about that after the game, and uh, he said, uh, yeah, I like uh, I like hitting people, you know, I like that's why I like that, you know, a lot more, and it's always fun watching, you know, Lubes, uh, as he called him, Lubinsky, um, you know, rumble into the end zone, you know, and stuff like that, and but and Austin Larson too was seven eleven, you know, one hundred thirty yards, two more touchdown throwing. Uh, Landon Peterson had a good game as well. Nice touchdown grab. And Levinsky also had a 14-yard uh, receiving touchdown as well. Um, and they were just kind of did all, they really had no very little issues moving the ball at all. And that was something Yashinsky, you know, mentioned too that they they saw the film against Sparta the previous mm -hmm. week and how Central really struggled to stop the run. And uh, and that's kind of been a theme for Central throughout this season. Um, mm -hmm. Just inability to stop that run right up the middle and. 
they were looking their chops, and that offensive line played great. And Lubinsky, you know, that you're not going to bring him down with a couple arm tackles. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to run you over. And that's that's essentially what happened. And then pretty soon it was thirteen nothing. Pretty soon it was twenty eight nothing. And then you look up and you're like, holy smokes, this game's done. Yeah. And that's and that's what happened. It was like I said, it was a great, unbelievable showing by that defense. They proved a lot of people that they are for real. Um, like I said, you know, we gave them some bulletin board material as they saw it. Put that, um, put that on Huddle Yashinsky. Yeah, yeah, Yashinsky, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> defense was great tonight. Yeah, defense was great tonight, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it, was, it was, like I said, very surprising what I saw from them tonight. And it's... Uh, and well, you, you can't expect. Yeah. Like, that's all I said before. You just can't... You just cannot you, you expect can, You can have all the confidence in the world. Yeah. But you can't expect the defense to go out there and do that. And, you can, and if they yeah. do it again, it's going to be a long time before they lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, If they, if they play like that, I mean, yeah. this is a... This and, is and very, we knew this yeah. was going to be a dangerous team mm-hmm. going into the playoffs. Um, just, just because there's, there's just talent everywhere on yeah. this team. Yeah, exactly. And, and you can, you can yep. say the same thing for, for Holman, too. And mm-hmm. I, yes. at the beginning of the year, I mean, I, I picked on Alaska to win the conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, going into this week, uh, you got team one really coming in off a high and one up a low. So we'll see what plays into that. I still expect a really good game next week between these two with, yeah. with the rivalry and what's at stake. So, um it, it'll be a great great way to end the regular season, that's for sure. Yeah, and of course, Holman, or Alaska's trying to win the MVC title outright, and if Holman wins, then we'll have a three-way tie because Sparta yep. next week plays non-conference Conference. matchup against Smart Marshfield, yep. and so obviously that won't factor into the MVC standings. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to be a fun one. They are where they yeah. are right now. Yep, and Todd's going to be at that one too, right, Todd? You're going to be there? Holman on Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. So I didn't even ask that. I didn't even ask that. All right. And, well, you know, let's, let's jump over to the Scenic Bluffs. Um, Bangor absolutely dominated Brookwood. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we mentioned Brookwood's, you know, rushing offense and the last team to beat them. And Bangor... I think I think Klinkner had four yards. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, and then I think that's what it is. The leading rusher in the area. I think it was 12 carries, four yards. Yeah. I think it's what he ended up with. I mean, it was a chance for Bangor to take a challenge on, and they, I mean, they scored, I don't know how many times early in the game. Seemed like a lot. They're, they're up 29-something, like, in the second quarter at some point. So, yeah. uh, I, I don't know what the halftime score was, but they kind of scored at will in this thing and and really brought it defensively just as, as on Alaska did. So, mm-hmm. Not a shock that they dominated the game. Yeah. Um, especially because Brookwood took that loss to Cashton, and and Cashton certainly Cashton's having a great year, by the way. Yeah. Uh, considering where it was last, last where they year. have twenty some kids yeah, last year. It's, it's numbers so are not that, not that, not taking away of anything they're doing, but they mm-hmm. certainly aren't going out and dominating people. No. Uh, and the fact that they beat Brookwood kind of gave you an idea that that Bangor yeah. might be able to roll in this one. Bangor closes out against Cashton. Mm-hmm. And Cashton's sitting there with one conference loss. You know, if they can find a way to, to beat Bangor, they'll get a share. I don't know that that's going to be the case, but it could be something. I don't know if it would be a game like this, but uh, it, it, Cashton kind of squeaked by Brookwood. So if you want to look at common mm-hmm. common happenings there, that may show us. And then Bangor is just so good. But Yeah, Carl Hart's happens. another big night for him. Yep. Off his line, of course, is dominating as well. Um, but yeah, Todd, we look around the scores. Anyone that kind of really jump out at you right now? Or no, I mean, I, I was, I, I, I think it's a great one for Logan. Yeah, going into Logan, the Toma yeah. game, and, and Logan Toma games are always big. It's one of those rivalries. It's a little cross Toma rivalry, of course, but there's a lot of people on both sides. Uh, Toma people from Logan, Logan people at or, or Toma people at Logan. Um, Casey Noble being a Toma guy and, and coaching this team and. And previous coach Wally Janiwako, the Toma guy in, in Logan, and so there's there's that little twist to, to that. So good for Logan to get a win, and good for Toma to get a win. They're both going in uh, feeling pretty good, I guess, going into the last week. Playoffs aren't going to be an option, but uh, they can both finish off the season strong. Um, that's that's I guess would be one thing that, that jumps out at me. Um, a, a good performance by Logan there. Yeah, but we got a win from the city tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, yep, we did. We sure did. And Central, of course, next week is going to be, you know, they have to win. They, yeah, they got to yeah, they got, yeah, they they got to win West to Salem. get that, that, that 500 record. And West Salem could be a spoiler, but mm-hmm. I don't know the way they've been playing. I don't know if they, they'd they be up for that yeah. challenge, although Central's kind of going in off a of dud here. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have to get something together to win that game. Yeah. 
Well, on that note, that'll be all for us tonight. My name is Alex Van Hoon and Todd Sommerfeld. Like always, find everything up at lacrossereview.com. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties that yeah. we were getting. We're, we're, they were frustrating us. Yes. We'll, just, we'll just leave it at that. We'll just leave it at that. Very frustrating. But it's all out on our Facebook feed. Yes. So if you follow us on Facebook, or you, you'll have everything there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game stories are all up from tonight. and. Yeah. And all that, including our photos. roundup with all the games. Yeah, photos, uh, roundup with all the games that were reported to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we'll have more on the website tomorrow and in the paper on Sunday. And with that, we'll see you next week. Have a good night.